Today, I'm going to show you how to build a meal plan. We always talk about meal plans in the sense that you already have your designated and prescribed macronutrient-based diet, meaning we prescribe specific macros to each specific individual. None of these individuals need to follow a meal plan, and I wanna make that very specific because there's this battle between if it fits your macros and meal plans or clean eating, right? And, and it's like, which one is better? Well, they've done research on this, and a lot of times, actually, meal plans do create better results. But it doesn't mean flexible dieting doesn't work because flexible dieting proved to show uh, more of a nutrient diversity in a person's diet because they get more different foods. They get a wider variety of fruits, vegetables, meats, whatever they choose really. So they're more likely to get a diverse array of nutrients within their diet. But a meal plan might produce better fat loss results. Why is that? Well, it, it gives you a system, it gives you a routine, it organizes things, it gives you a plan. So you never really have to guess what's gonna happen, what am I gonna eat, how am I gonna do this, and you're not playing the macro Tetris game where you get to dinner, you realize you have 70 grams of protein, two grams of fat, and 15 grams of carbs left. What the hell are you supposed to eat for dinner besides three plain chicken breasts with some hot sauce? Nothing, it's horrible. But if you have a meal plan, you know exactly what's coming up. You wake up, you know what the first meal is, you know what the second meal is, so on and so forth. So what we try to do is take somebody's macronutrient profile, ratio, diet, prescription, whatever you wanna call it, we start there. This is at the bottom of the pyramid, the bottom of the hierarchy. The most important thing is for you to just hit these macros. I don't care if you have one meal, two meals, three meals, six meals, 10 meals per day, eat these numbers, hit these numbers, then you're gonna get results. Once we get consistent here, we're gonna to move to the next thing to optimize, to, to build upon that. We have the foundation, now let's build the building up, let's build vertically. And at that point, that's when we discuss nutrient timing. Okay, how many calories, how much protein, how much carbs, how much fat comes in each meal? When are those meals coming about? And that's what I'm gonna kinda of talk to you about today. How to structure that meal plan based on your macronutrient prescription. And then after the meal plan and the nutrient time is created, that's when we discuss supplementation, adjustments along the way, refeeds, diet breaks, so on and so forth, which we've done other videos on. So go check out the channel or swipe through this Instagram page to see those. But today we're gonna to talk about a meal plan. The simplest way to do this, I'm gonna keep this very brief, very to the point because it's so easy for you to do and it will help so much. I typically recommend four meals a day, four or five meals a day, in my experience, tends to be the best. All the studies on meal timing, meal frequency, how many meals per day you're gonna eat, it really is, it, without a doubt, it's inclusive that it's, it's you know two meals, three meals, four meals, five meals, six meals, it's all the same. If you hit your daily calories, you are going to get the same result. The place I would argue is where we start to consider digestion. We start to consider energy levels. We start to consider workout nutrition, recovering and optimizing your performance. We also start to discuss adherence. Can you adhere to a diet very well if you're only eating twice a day because you're starving throughout the day? Can you adhere to a diet really well if you're eating six times a day because it's too much times to eat? This is why four to five times per day tends to be that sweet spot of optimizing muscle protein synthesis and recovery, adherence, energy, digestion, so on and so forth. So we're gonna use this template as four meals per day. We're gonna break this into a table, protein, carbs, and fats, and then meals one, two, three, and four. We need to also designate a pre and a post-workout meal. For this, it's gonna be in the afternoon. I put that because I personally train in the afternoon, and if you have a choice between morning and afternoon workouts, I do suggest afternoons typically. There's been some research that shows between three to five p.m. is the best time of day to train, most likely because you're fresh, you have some meals in you, your joints aren't stiff from just waking up, so on and so forth. But we're gonna have the pre-workout meal as meal three and the post-workout meal as meal four. Now we just need to drag and drop things into the template to get you where you wanna be. So first and foremost, protein. We're gonna put protein in every single meal because every single meal should have an even distribution of protein. We wanna take our total protein amount, which is why we're not talking numbers here because I don't know what your individual macronutrient prescription is, but if it was 100 grams, that's 25 grams per meal. Really, really easy, right? If it's 200 grams, that's 50 grams per meal. I personally eat 200 grams per day, which means each of these boxes would have five zero grams, 50 grams of protein per meal. I'm gonna evenly distribute it because I want at least 20 to 25 grams of protein in a single meal to make sure that I'm stimulating muscle protein synthesis adequately and I wanna make sure I have an even balance across the day so I keep that rate of muscle protein synthesis going and I keep the satiety higher. 
Because as we know, as we go into a diet, we will get more hungry. It's just part of it. You get hungrier and hungrier as your diet goes on, the deficit gets lower. But if you have higher protein intake, you're gonna blunt that hunger response a little bit because protein is the most satiating nutrient. So during a diet, this is unbelievably important, not only to maintain muscle mass while you cut, but also to make sure that you're satiated throughout the whole day during the diet. After that, we're gonna place fats. Fats are gonna be in every single meal as well, but what we're gonna see here is that we're gonna have higher amounts of fats right here and here, and lower amounts of fat in the pre and post workout window. Why is that? It's because Predominantly, we want carbohydrates in those pre and post workout meal, and we wanna make sure that we remove some of those fats because if we have less fats in the diet during a high carb meal, we are more likely to speed up the rate of digestion and just make absorption of those nutrients a little bit easier. So typically what I would recommend here is a high protein diet across the day. We're gonna have higher fats in the morning, meal one and meal two, and then we're gonna have lower fats, meal three and meal four, which is gonna be the pre and post workout window. Last but not least, we have carbs. First and foremost, we're gonna prioritize the pre and the post-workout meal. I know there's a bunch of lines everywhere, so just try to follow me. But the pre and post-workout meal are the two most important meals for you to have carbohydrates in. So maybe you only have 150 grams of carbs in your entire diet. Maybe you have 60 and 60, which leaves you with 30 grams of protein per day left, or I'm sorry, 30 grams of carbs left, which means only you have 15 grams of carbs meal one and meal two. You might just have some green veggies in those meals. You might just have veggies or peppers or mushrooms, really low carb, but satiating and healthy foods. Whereas you might put your oats or your rice or your sweet potatoes or all these things that I have listed over here in meal three and meal four, because you wanna put the bulk of those carbohydrates around your workout. It's potentially gonna fuel the workout better by just building up liver, muscle, and blood glucose. So glycogen stores are gonna go up, blood glucose is gonna go up. That's probably gonna help your workouts. And if you have uh, carbohydrates post-workout, we're replenishing those glycogen stores and the blood glucose. And we're gonna blunt that cortisol response because as we know, training is a stressor. So cortisol goes up when we train, which isn't a bad thing. But post-workout, we wanna blunt that cortisol response to limit stress and improve recovery. This means pre and post workout are most likely the best times to prioritize carbohydrates. Now, if you're somebody like me who has a higher carbohydrate diet at the moment, I'm gonna have relatively high carbs across the day. And it doesn't really matter when I place them there because I'm not in a deficit. And because I'm eating enough food and I'm at maintenance or above in a surplus, I can basically just evenly spread all my nutrients. I'm gonna be tapped out. I'm tapped out on calories no matter what, so it doesn't matter as much. But as we go into a diet, this timing of carbohydrates becomes more and more and more important. The other thing to consider in these two meals is combining sources of carbohydrates. We know that our body has multiple glucose transporters, which basically means that our body's gonna take different carb sources and store them more efficiently if we are combining them together because they use different transporters. So not all the carbohydrates have to go through one transporter if we're splitting it up and using two different ones. Now, the predominant fuel source for training is gonna be a starchy carb, which is glucose, because the muscles hold muscle glycogen, which is glucose, whereas the liver holds fructose, which is fruit, and that's liver glycogen. Your liver glycogen stores are much, much smaller than your muscle glycogen stores, and therefore the predominant carb source in these two meals, the pre and post workout, should still be a starchy carb, which is glucose. A little bit of it should be fruit, which is fructose. So this might be 80% starch, 20% fruit. Right, so what this would look like is if you had 100 grams of carbs in your post-workout meal, that is 80 grams of carbs from a starchy carb like rice, potatoes, oats, whatever it may be, and 20 grams of carbs from blueberries or banana or apple, whatever fruit you like. Now we're combining those together, we're getting our micronutrients that we need to get the vitamins and minerals in our diet during the deficit, but we're also utilizing multiple glucose transporters to fuel recovery and make performance a little bit better. So at the end of the day, what we have here is an even spread of protein. We have carbs favored around the workout. If you have extra carbs to spare, you can place them wherever you want. Higher fats in the morning away from the workout to speed up the digestion of those carbs during pre and post the workout. And then uh, most of our carbs, again, sitting around the workout window. And if we do this in this template, we can literally create our list. So you can sit down and go, okay, what protein sources do I love most? Chicken, steak, eggs, whey, yogurt, cottage cheese, whatever it is. They, these are your lists, and then you're gonna plug and play. So when I go to think, what am I gonna eat tomorrow? What is my meal plan tomorrow? I'm gonna go, okay, I want 
eggs for breakfast, and then I'm going to have Greek yogurt with some whey protein for uh, my second meal snack, then I'm going to have uh, chicken uh, for my third meal, and I'm going to finish the day with some casein protein as like my, my snack before bed. Right, so now I have my protein laid out. Okay, what, what fats am I gonna put with that? Um, in the morning, I'm gonna do some whole eggs and I'm gonna cook it in oil. Meal two, I'm gonna take some fish oil and maybe add some nut butter to the mix of my Greek yogurt, my whey, so on and so forth, and then I add the carbs. But what we're doing here is taking it ingredient by ingredient. And what that's gonna do is make planning easier, it's gonna make your day more organized, it's gonna be easier to optimize nutrient timing, and last but not least, you're more likely to be accurate with your macronutrients when you're tracking them. And you're gonna be more precise with what you're tracking from a number perspective because you're separating all these different nutrients. So you have just protein, just fat, and just carbs, which makes it a hell of a lot easier to know exactly how much food you're taking in from a macronutrient perspective. Mm -hmm.